Hello there, here it is, uh, January 10th, I believe. Let me look down here and say, yes, January 10th, 2011. And uh, I thought today I might talk about something that's been gnawing at my vitals for some time. I'm talking about accents. I think it's a shame that we're losing our regional accents ever since radio was invented and a common accent was spread around the country by radio. That was bad enough, but after the TV came in, and everybody on TV talks the same, just like I'm talking right now. No accent. Well, I think it's a shame. I mean, you stop to think about my heritage in New England. All my older relatives had the New England accent. But I never learned it because I grew up in California. But um, when you stop to think about, for, say, President Kennedy, he had this thick New England accent, and a comedian named Von Meter made a career out of imitating Kennedy's accent. And uh, even today, uh, you see some older people interviewed on TV, they'll have that thick New England accent. But I never learned it. I did learn a few New England expressions, words, and things of that nature. Uh, one, of the, one of the main features of the New England accent is they never pronounce the letter R unless there isn't supposed to be one, then they throw one in, in the phrase, lower and order. Well, I, I learned to say that. I, even to this day, I still say lower and order instead of law and order. Things, those are things that are sort of, it's a shame to lose them. New England's accent has that quaint sound. And that's not only New England, but you take down south, there's various versions of the southern accent. There's one in Texas. The main, the deep south has another one. And the middle area, like around Baltimore, Maryland, although they don't call it Baltimore, they say Baltimore. I remember when I visited there, well, I actually was stationed at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, and I heard the word Baltimore many times. North Dakota, places like that, uh, the immigrants that came from various European countries brought their accents with them, and they stuck there till this day. As a matter of fact, Gardner, Mass., where I was born and went to high school, uh, they had a lot of foreign accents, too. But the funny thing is, the Europeans that came over here, they did their best to lose the accent. They wanted to fit right in and, and join the American community. And they worked hard at it, and a lot of them succeeded. A lot of them kept their accent, couldn't get rid of it, like they'd say D's and D's. The, the TH sound gave them a lot of trouble. Well, too bad it isn't like that today. We have foreigners coming in there now, mostly Mexicans, and they don't want to learn English. They want to, if they do learn English, they keep a thick accent, and actually what they want to do is make this a dual language country and make us learn Spanish. Well, I don't think it's going to work, but they're, they've got a lot of Spanish influence, whatever you call anybody, customer support, they always have you push a button if you want to talk English. That's a shame too. Okay, now another thing about accents is some of the actors and comedians that faked an accent and made a career out of it. I'm thinking of one guy named Harry Stewart. Back in the 1950s and 60s, Harry Stewart imitated the Swedish accent and used the name Yogi Jorgensen. And he was really good at that. He made a bunch of novelty songs with a Swedish accent uh, very successfully. Uh, he also did a Japanese accent and changed the name to Harry Carey. And he did songs like Freedom, My Clam Digger, Sweetheart, and <laughs> had this really good uh, Japanese accent for that. Speaking of Japanese accent reminds me when I was a little boy in L.A., they had a program on KNX called Frank and Archie. Archie was an English accent guy. His name was the Right Honorable Archibald Chiselberry, and he had a really thick English accent. They also had a Japanese houseboy named uh, Frank Watanabe and with a thick Japanese accent. Not only that, but they would introduce other characters in their show with various accents. These two guys did the whole show. These two men, which I wish I could remember their name, 
One of them was Reginald Charlin. He did the English. I can't think of the guy that did the Japanese guy. Um, it'll come to me, maybe. But in, also on that show, they had several other characters with different accents, and these two actors uh, played all the parts. Except they had a woman who would come in once in a while. They used an actual woman for that. But uh, that was an example of using accents in showbiz. Talk about accents. I don't know if you'd call W.C. Fields an accent, but he had a dis very distinctive voice, and he always kept, he never broke character even when he was off camera. Anywhere he was, he would talk the same. Back to New England again. Besides the accent they had, and this probably is the case around the country, they have different names for food. Uh, different things like, uh, in, for instance, in Massachusetts, they don't call pop soda pop. They call it tonic, believe it or not. And uh, they don't call a, uh, a milkshake a milkshake. They have another name, uh, maybe frap. I forget what it was, but they had a lot of funny names. You go in a restaurant and order toast, and they say, do you want dark? Do you want white toast or dark toast? They don't say whole wheat, they say dark. And uh, different phrases like that. And I've picked up some of those. Uh, my favorite one is the word Hamburg. Uh, the rest of the country, they call it hamburger or burger. But in New England, it's a Hamburg. And we, a couple of guys say, let's go out and get a Hamburg. And I've, I've kept that all my life. I still say it to this day. Well, so much for the accents. Rattled on long enough about this. I also wanted to uh, use this as a demonstration of my new chroma key background. I don't know what kind of background I'm going to put in when I finish this, but as I'm sitting here with you talking, right behind me is a completely blank green background, and I'll throw something into that. And until the next time I think of something to rattle on about, I'm Red Blanchard, and I say, so long until then.